Hello everyone, today's video covers part 2 of Solarf's Privacy Taxonomy Information Processing. Make sure to check out part 1 in which I introduce the taxonomy and cover the first group information collection. I will link the video in the description below. As just said, we now deal with information processing. This refers to any kind of use of data by whoever collected the data, for example a company. This entity is called data holder. The first form of information processing is aggregation. Whenever a company, such as Google, possesses such huge amounts of data about so many individuals, it is possible to link these data and thus get a comprehensive profile of the individual. Solarf calls this process of profiling aggregation. Combining so many different sources of data can reveal a lot about a person. In this case, the sum of the data is bigger than the individual data itself. Obviously, this has always happened, however, the opportunities given by the digital age are of course limitless. This is one of the reasons the GDPR, for example, prohibits profiling. Next up is identification. On face value, identification is the association of data with a particular human being. It's different from aggregation as you don't just link digital data, but connect the data to an actual human being in the flesh. It's important to remind you that Solarf is from the US. In the US, national uh, identification cards are not as ubiquitous as they are, for example, in Europe. Identification is obviously connected to other forms of privacy intrusions, such as surveillance and interrogation, which we covered in the previous video. Extreme forms of identification include tattoos and branding in not-so-distant past used for slaves or other racial subjugation. More benign forms of ID, such as passports, were also used to stifle dissent. During the McCarthy era, it was prohibited for communists to use passports such that they cannot travel outside the US. At the moment, the internet can be used an anonymously if you use a VPN or if you trust Tor. Without anonymity, criticisms of governments or even corporations can lead to the loss of one's job or worse. No one would be able to become a whistleblower if you can't remain anonymous. But recent advances of a digital ID in the EU will make this impossible in the future, which is why, in my opinion, it is worthwhile to oppose it. We now move on to insecurity. Insecurity describes a group of problems which results in identity theft. Identity theft very often is a problem of insufficient identification of, for example, creditors and credit reporting agencies. But the biggest problems are the insufficient means in which data is, or was, protected by businesses and the government. Back in 2006, companies used social security numbers as passwords, for example, which were of course not that hard to get for criminals. The, this point goes to show that data has to be kept secure and companies have to prove that they apply sufficient security measures. This can be found in Article 25 of the GDPR, for example, which says data controllers need to implement appropriate technical and organizational measures, the famous TOMS, and to integrate the necessary safeguards. This can directly be traced back to the problem of insecurity. We now move on to secondary use. Secondary use basically means using data for uh, other purposes than for those it has been collected. The principle prohibiting this practice is called purpose specification and is again to be found in the GDPR. Article 5 of the GDPR states that personal data shall be collected for specified explicit and legitimate purposes and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with those purposes. That means that you must notify the data subject about the purpose you collect the data for and must not use the data for any other purpose. If you want to do that, you have to get consent from the data subject again to use it for that other way. So why is secondary use considered a privacy violation? Because people might not give away their data if they knew it is being used for example intrusive marketing purposes. A more serious violation is that military recruits were giving their fi fingerprints when they enlisted and these fingerprints were promptly sent to a database uh, which contains the FBI's criminal fingerprints. It is a betrayal of the individual's trust. The next or final point, exclusion, finally denotes the failure 
to provide individuals information about their stored records. Again, this principle can be found in Article 15 of the GDPR, which provides individuals the right to request access to the information stored about them, and also in Article 16, which grants them the right to rectify any wrong information. Article 17, if I remember correctly, is the right to be forgotten or the right to erasure. It is easy to see why failing to provide people with information about which data about them is stored is a problem. If you hear about a breach, you want to know whether your data is affected. It leaves the data subject powerless regarding their own data, as they would not be able to participate in the maintenance and use of their information. This concludes the second part of Solov's Privacy Taxonomy Information Processing. Write down any comments or questions you have, and I will see you in part 3, in which we will deal with information dissemination. As usual, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you learned something, and until next time.